Hey, here we are at day number 229 in our reading calendar. Welcome. May the Lord bless you real good today as we read Jeremiah 51, the first half of Proverbs 11 and 1 John 5. Today the Lord continues the long prophecy against Babylon. This is the second of two chapters on this topic. Jeremiah 51 This is what the Lord says, I will stir up a destroyer against Babylon and the people of Babylonia. Foreigners will come and winnow her, blowing her away as chaff. They will come from every side to rise against her in her day of trouble. Don't let the archers put on their armor or draw their bows. Don't spare even her best soldiers. Let her army be completely destroyed. They will fall in the land of the Babylonians, slashed to death in her streets. For the Lord of heaven's armies has not abandoned Israel and Judah. He is still their God, even though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from Babylon, save yourselves, don't get trapped in her punishment. It is the Lord's time for vengeance, he will repay her in full. Babylon has been a gold cup in the Lord's hands, a cup that made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank Babylon's wine, and it drove them all mad. But suddenly Babylon too has fallen, weep for her. Give her medicine. Perhaps she can yet be healed. We would have helped her if we could, but nothing can save her now. Let her go. Abandon her. Return now to your own land, for her punishment reaches to the heavens. It is so great it cannot be measured. The Lord has vindicated us. Come, let us announce in Jerusalem everything the Lord our God has done. Sharpen the arrows, lift up the shields, for the Lord has inspired the kings of the Medes to march against Babylon and destroy her. This is his vengeance against those who desecrated his temple. And by the way, this prediction was written about 70 years before this happened. Raise the battle flag against Babylon, reinforce the guard and station the watchmen, Prepare an ambush, for the Lord will fulfill his plans against Babylon. You are a city by a great river, a great center of commerce, but your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of heaven's armies has taken this vow and has sworn to it by his own name. Your cities will be filled with enemies, like fields swarming with locusts, and they will shout in triumph over you. The Lord made the earth by his power, and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens are filled with water. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for their carefully shaped works are a fraud. These idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including his people, his own special possession. The Lord of Heaven's armies is his name. You are my battle axe and sword, says the Lord. With you I will shatter nations and destroy many kingdoms. With you I will shatter armies, destroying the horses and rider, the chariot and the charioteer. With you I will shatter men and women, old people and children, young men and maidens. With you I will shatter shepherds and flocks, farmers and oxen, captains and officers. 
I will repay Babylon and the people of Babylonia for all the wrong they have done to my people in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Look, O mighty mountain, destroyer of the earth. I am your enemy, says the Lord. I will raise my fist against you to knock you down from the heights. When I am finished, you will be nothing but a heap of burnt rubble. You will be desolate forever. Even your stones will never again be used for building. You will be completely wiped out, says the Lord. Raise a signal flag to the nations. Sound the battle cry. Mobilize them all against Babylon. Prepare them to fight against her. Bring out the armies of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a commander and bring a multitude of horses like swarming locusts. Bring against her the armies of the nations, led by the kings of the Medes and all their captains and officers. The earth trembles and writhes in pain, for everything the Lord has planned against Babylon stands unchanged. Babylon will be left desolate without a single inhabitant. Her mightiest warriors no longer fight. They stay in their barracks, their courage gone. They have become like women. The invaders have burned the houses and broken down the city gates. The news is passed from one runner to the next as the messengers hurry to tell the king that the city has been captured. All the escape routes are blocked. The marshes have been set aflame, and the army is in a panic. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Babylon is like wheat on a threshing floor, about to be trampled. In just a little while her harvest will begin. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has eaten and crushed us and drained us of strength. He has swallowed us like a great monster and filled his belly with our riches. He has thrown us out of our own country. Make Babylon suffer as she made us suffer, say the people of Zion. Make the people of Babylonia pay for spilling our blood, says Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to Jerusalem. I will be your lawyer to plead your case, and I will avenge you. I will dry up her river as well as her springs, and Babylon will become a heap of ruins haunted by jackals. She will be an object of horror and contempt, a place where no one lives. Her people will roar together like strong lions. They will growl like lion cubs. And while they lie inflamed with all their wine, I will prepare a different kind of feast for them. I will make them drink until they fall asleep, and they will never wake up again, says the Lord. Again, this was fulfilled. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and goats to be sacrificed. How Babylon is fallen! Great Babylon praised throughout the earth. Now she has become an object of horror among the nations. The sea has risen over Babylon. She is covered by its crashing waves. Her cities now lie in ruins. She is a dry wasteland where no one lives or even passes by. And I will punish Bel, the god of Babylon, and make him vomit up all he has eaten. The nations will no longer come and worship him. The wall of Babylon has fallen. Come out, my people, flee from Babylon. Save yourselves, run from the Lord's fierce anger. But do not panic, don't be afraid, when you hear the first rumor of approaching forces. For rumors will keep coming year by year. Violence will erupt in the land as the leaders fight against each other. For the time is surely coming when I will punish this great city and all her idols. Her whole land will be disgraced, and her dead will lie in the streets. Then the heavens and earth will rejoice, for out of the north will come destroying armies against Babylon, says the Lord. Just as Babylon killed the people of Israel and others throughout the world, so must her people be killed. Get out! 
all you who have escaped the sword. Do not stand and watch. Flee while you can. Remember the Lord, though you are in a far-off land, and think about your home in Jerusalem. We are ashamed, the people say. We are insulted and disgraced because the Lord's temple has been defiled by foreigners. Yes, says the Lord, but the time is coming when I will destroy Babylon's idols. The groans of her wounded people will be heard throughout the land. Though Babylon reaches as high as the heavens and makes her fortifications incredibly strong, I will still send enemies to plunder her. I, the Lord, have spoken. Listen! Hear the cry of Babylon, the sound of great destruction from the land of the Babylonians. For the Lord is destroying Babylon. He will silence her loud voice. Waves of enemies pound against her. The noise of battle rings through the city. Destroying armies come against Babylon. Her mighty men are captured and their weapons break in their hands. For the Lord is a God who gives just punishment. He always repays in full. I will make her officials and wise men drunk along with her captains, officers, and warriors. They will fall asleep and never wake up again, says the king, whose name is the Lord of heaven's armies. Again, this was fulfilled. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. The thick walls of Babylon will be leveled to the ground, and her massive gates will be burned. The builders from many lands have worked in vain, for their work will be destroyed by fire. The prophet Jeremiah gave this message to Sariah, son of Neriah, and grandson of Maseah, a staff officer, when Sariah went to Babylon with King Zedekiah of Judah. This was during the fourth year of Zedekiah's reign. Jeremiah had recorded on a scroll all the terrible disasters that would soon come upon Babylon, all the words written here. He said to Sariah, When you get to Babylon, read aloud everything on this scroll. Then say, Lord, you have said that you will destroy Babylon so that neither people nor animals will remain here. She will lie empty and abandoned forever. When you have finished reading the scroll, Tie it to a stone and throw it into the Euphrates River. Then say, In this same way Babylon and her people will sink, never again to rise, because of the disasters I will bring upon her. This is the end of Jeremiah's Messages. Tomorrow we have the concluding story in the last chapter of Jeremiah. And now turning to Proverbs 11. An important thing that I didn't mention before is that these Proverbs represent principles, not promises. This particularly needs to be remembered for verses that talk about prosperity. There will be times, such as what Jeremiah experienced, when no amount of godly living will bring us wealth and prosperity. The first half of Proverbs 11 The Lord detests the use of dishonest scales, but he delights in accurate weights. Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Riches won't help on the day of judgment, but right living can save you from death. The godly are directed by honesty. The wicked fall beneath their load of sin. The godliness of good people rescues them. The ambition of treacherous people traps them. When the wicked die, their hopes die with them, 
for they rely on their own feeble strength. The godly are rescued from trouble, but it falls on the wicked instead. With their words, the godless destroy their friends, but knowledge will rescue the righteous. The whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. They shout for joy when the wicked die. Upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper, but the talk of the wicked tears it apart. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling lies, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisers. There is danger in putting up security for a stranger's debt. It is safer not to guarantee another person's debt. A gracious woman gains respect. But ruthless men gain only wealth. Yesterday I highlighted these verses from chapter 4 of First John. We have come to know how much God loves us, and we have fully believed in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live joined together with God, and God lives joined together with them. And as we live joined together with God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. 1 John 5 Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, that is, the King of Salvation, the Messiah, has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children, too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey His commandments. Loving God means keeping His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our fully believing. And who can win this battle against the world? only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Christ Jesus was revealed as God's Son through water and through blood, the water and blood that poured from his cross at his crucifixion, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God, and God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever is joined together with the Son has life. Whoever is not joined together with God's Son 
does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in Jesus, the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. And we are confident that God hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases Him. And since we know He hears us when we make our requests, we also know that He will give us what we ask for. If you see a Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death, and I am not saying you should pray for those who commit it. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. For God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. We know that we are children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with His Son, Christ Jesus. He, Jesus, is the true God, and He is eternal life. Dear children, keep away from idols, that is, anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Let's pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, the God who has arranged such a glorious salvation for us through Christ Jesus, we come again to the point that I have so often stressed this year as we've read these verses, Lord, and that is fully believing. Through fully believing, we can have assurance that you are our Father, we have become your children, because we believe that Jesus is the King of salvation, the Messiah, the Christ, that you sent into the world, the Anointed One. You have given us powerful testimonies, and so we believe you, Lord. We believe you fully. And that means also we believe what you have said about us. Therefore, Lord, we believe that we already have eternal life. And we believe that you hear us when we pray to you. O oh Lord, please help us with your Holy Spirit that we will know how to pray and know how to ask according to your will. Our Father, I especially pray that you would help me avoid my habitual sins and my frequent failings. You say here that your children will not make a practice of sinning and that your Son holds us securely and the evil one cannot touch us. O oh Lord, I pray that this would be true of us. And this, I'm sure, is according to your will, because we're praying according to your word.